thy face of the goodness of Jesus. And all he has done for me. You know my soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me. You know my soul cries out, hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, you know my soul cries out, Hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all he has done for me. You know my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly praise and thank the Lord for his greatness and his mercy and his love that he has shown toward us. Thank God for the love that he has shown toward the children of men. Uh, I often say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. And we would certainly be in a mess. <laughs> yes. Because he brings us out of darkness to causes us to walk in his marvelous light. Yes. God, God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. And God is for us. Uh, if you look back even over the, the lives of the Hebrew children of Israel and uh, God said that he brought them out and made them a nation because he, not that they were great, but that he desired to set his own affection upon them to show forth his love. God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Not that we're somebody, but that God chose us to show forth his affection and show forth his love and and we thank God for that. We praise God for that. Not to him that willeth, nor to him that runneth, but to him whom God showeth mercy. And we thank God for his mercy and his grace. Because we could be uh, uh, lost, amen, but we thank God that uh, we heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And through that gospel, uh, we obeyed through the believing of the truth. And as we get ready to go forth and to the Lord in prayer. We certainly want to remember men and women and children everywhere. Uh, pray for everybody everywhere. Uh, Jesus, uh, the scripture says about Jesus, is about as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And let that be our prayer that many people receive him. Uh, because he said that he came to his own and his own received him not. Amen. The Lord it's a bad thing uh, uh, for people to reject Christ. Yes. And when they reject Christ, they literally reject him everything. Exactly. Amen. Because he is everything. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. my God. Hallelujah. There's no other. There's no other name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved yes. other than the name of Jesus. So let us, let us pray that uh, the God of this world, which is Satan, Bible says, um, uh, who has blinded the eyes 
of some is so that they uh, won't believe. Let us pray that uh, the Lord would bind that enemy uh, so that people would uh, rise and shine and see the glorious light yes. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, let us pray uh, for those that are bereaving, those that are going through. Uh, pray for the success of the service on tonight. And if you have a particular prayer request, you can uh, let it be known in the name of Jesus. All right, we want to ask the church to stand, and we certainly do thank God for our viewers on tonight that have tuned in with us on Facebook Live, and we thank God for you, and if you have a particular prayer request, you can put it in the chat, and um, uh, we'll be sure to follow up on it uh, as we review it uh, uh, later on this evening. Let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we simply thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for having you blessed each and every one of us to come together one more time. We thank you for the joy, the joy of salvation, the joy of deliverance. We thank you, Lord, for being our very present help in the time of trouble, in the time of need. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for being our hedge of protection, for keeping us and watching over us, Lord, hallelujah, even unto this day. We thank you, Lord, for a mind to come and to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. To be among them that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And we ask you, Lord, that you continue to bless each and every request, each and every unspoken request. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Even those that would put a request in the chat line. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you allow things to be done according to your will, decently and in order. Lord, we pray, Lord, hallelujah, that you'll heal the sick, raise the dead. Oh, God, hallelujah, that you'll send comfort and peace to those that need deliverance and strength. Hallelujah, Lord, as we see the day approaching, Lord, bless us in our minds that we'll cleave unto you, Lord, with a purpose in heart, that we'll lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us, looking unto you, Jesus, because you're the author and the finisher of our faith. And bless us, Lord, to be kingdom-minded. Hallelujah, to build your kingdom. Father, we thank you. That come on, shot. And we give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I want you to turn with me tonight. Uh, we're in uh, First uh, Peter uh, chapter number 2. First Peter chapter number 2. We're going to go through that chapter. The Lord had laid it on my heart uh, to go through uh, 1 Peter, uh, all the chapters that are connected to that particular book. And as for a reason, is because uh, Peter deals uh, with a lot. Uh, he talks in this first chapter about the saints that are scattered and uh, dispersed uh, among uh, the Gentiles. And uh, the saints that were dispersed among the Gentiles, they suffered a lot of persecution. Uh, the saints uh, go through some things. They suffer some things. And uh, Peter uh, is really focusing in on how to get through the suffering, how to get through the suffering and the test and the trials. And these first couple of chapters, he lets us know what we have. Amen. It's important to know that uh, what we have, we've been called, we've been elected by God and, 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 and chosen by him and uh, not of corruptible things, but through the precious blood of Jesus. Yeah. And uh, uh, for a child of God, that should be the focus. Uh, when one comes into Christ, uh, it, the, the individual should really lay aside or let go of worldly things and focus more in on what God has done for them. Amen. That should be the study. That should be the, the focus. And then as you study and focus on what God has done for you, then it should transition into, Lord, what would you have me to do? Amen. Because when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, when he brought them out of Egypt and established them as a nation, a people. Uh, he literally freed them to serve him. 
And that's, that's what he does for us. He frees us to serve him. Amen. To walk in the beauty of holiness. To walk in the beauty of righteousness. And this is what Peter in his epistle is trying to get us to see. And as we begin to uh, look here then, uh, 1 Peter chapter number 2 uh, and verse number 1, he said, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. And what he's saying is that word there, wherefore, that wherefore literally connects to chapter number one. And chapter number one, he's telling you that, that, that what God has done for you, that he has made you holy, that he desires you to be a holy people. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen? And, and, and that's what he means by the wherefore. Since God has, has brought you salvation through Jesus Christ, and it is, it is God's desire that you be holy, which you can be. Amen? You can walk in a holy way. You can walk in a righteous way. You can live a holy, righteous life free from sin. So he's saying, wherefore then? Since God has done these things for you, amen, sent you the blood of Jesus, sent you uh, salvation, sent you his word. He says, wherefore then, amen, because of that, he says, wherefore, notice what he says then, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisy and envies and all evil speaking. Now that word, that word there, uh, laying aside. Uh, he's looking at uh, you laying aside all these evil things as one would lay aside dirty clothes. When you have, when you have dirty clothes on, uh, you take them off and you lay them aside. Amen? Because why? They're dirty. He's saying uh, 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 a dirty nature, a dirty uh, 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 desires. He's saying Take them off like dirty clothes, amen, and lay them aside. Why? Because God has called you to holiness. God has called you to put on garments of righteousness, garments of holiness. Uh, uh, lay aside those evil things like, as you would do a, a, a dirty garment or something like that that's been soiled. Take it off, amen. Take off uh, malice. Take off guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings. He's saying that. Take that off. If your God has called you to righteousness, then uh, uh, put off things that are not righteous, that are not holy. And the way he's saying it here is that I know that we have inward struggles, that we have inward fights, but he's, he's presenting it in such a way as to let you know that 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 do it as easy as one, two, three, A, B, C. You know, make up in your mind. We do things uh, that we are committed to every day. Amen. If we're committed to something, we do it. Amen. Without hesitation. He's saying be committed to holiness and righteousness and, and lay aside those things. Make the change. Uh, I want you to turn with me uh, just to... Uh, the book of Romans, uh, Romans chapter number one. Hold there, because we're going to go through quite a bit of scriptures tonight. Hallelujah. Because I want I want to show you something, and this is Bible study, so we should we should study our Bible. Amen. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter number one, and I want you to drop down there to verse twenty nine. Amen. Romans chapter number one. And verse 29. Uh, and in that verse there, it says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, uh, deceit, uh, malignity, and whispers. All right, and it goes on to name some other stuff. But I want you to focus in on that one word, uh, two words really, uh, 
Well, actually, uh, four words. Being filled with all. Before you come to Christ, you were filled with all this stuff. <laughs> Amen. I say you, me too. <laughs> filled with it. Amen. We were filled with lying, uh, unrighteousness. We were filled with fornication, uh, wickedness, and covetousness. Amen. Uh, 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 and, and those things we did because we were full of it. Uh, so that's why he's telling you in, in, in 1 Peter uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 1 uh, to lay aside all of that. Amen. You can't uh, walk with God being filled with all of that wickedness. Amen. So there has to be a change. There has to be a change. Amen. So let's go back over to our scripture. Uh, notice. Notice what it says. It says, wherefore, then laying aside all malice. Amen. you got to lay aside, take off like a dirty garment, all malice. Malice is wickedness. Amen. Malice is wickedness. And uh, the thing about malice is is malice deals with an individual's uh, 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 wicked heart wherein they want to do evil just to do evil. You know, they think about uh, getting and doing evil to people just because. There's no real rhyme or reason. Just because they want to do something uh, to harm others. And you would think that, uh, uh, well, why is that in the church? It's not necessarily in the church. You brought that stuff with you. Amen. It, it, and that's why you got to take it off. A lot of this uh, of fornication, a lot of uh, uh, malice and, and envy and jealousy and lust, they bring that stuff with them. You know, we bring that stuff with us. So therefore, uh, it, it, when you get saved, it's not necessarily uh, you stop doing those things on your own without teaching, without doctrine, without understanding, amen, without power. Uh, so, so people bring that stuff in the church with them, but you can't operate in that stuff in the church, amen? So, so wicked malice deals with an evil, illicit heart, amen, that wants to do people in for no reason at all. Just want to just wanna get them, amen? Just want to uh, be a nuisance, just want to be uh, a, a, a troublemaker, just want to see people dead, just to see people dead, amen? Uh, people uh, 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 walk by you, they stick out their foot just to trip you, why? Just to trip you, see you fall. Uh, that's malice, amen? To set up plots, uh, to, to do you in, to get to get you, uh, just, just, just to do it, just to be doing it. He says, lay aside all of that kind of evil wickedness. Then he says, uh, and all guile. Guile deals with uh, 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 lying and uh, 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 deceit. Amen? Uh, saints of God cannot be deceitful. Uh, we got we to gotta present things honest and open before everybody. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. That's what the word uh, 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 malice and guile and deceit mean. Thank you, Jesus. And, and notice, he's saying, lay aside all malice. Huh? All malice. Lay aside all guile. Uh, uh, and notice, he's stressing it. Huh? And, and, and that guile uh, deals with, you know, uh, 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 being crafty being deceitful, being uh, tricky. <laughs> you, can't, you can't trick the saints. You can't trick other people. You can't trick the ants. <laughs> uh, don't, don't be like that. Notice then, he, then he says, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 1, and he says, put aside all what? What's the next one? Hypocrisies. Don't, don't go around uh, 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 with dissimulation, uh, uh, being a hypocrite, uh, trying to uh, portray yourself as somebody you're not. Amen? Don't be 
a, a, a hypocrite. Don't be going around being uh, 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 that kind of person. Then notice then, he says then the next one is, and envies, envies. Envies deals with jealousy, amen? Don't go around being jealous, amen? You gotta, these things are in our nature, amen? You gotta fight these things. And if you say you, you never were jealous, then you're lying. Amen. If people are jealous, amen. People are jealous of you. You're jealous of other people. Uh, and, 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 and be honest. Uh, when, when some people excel and you want to excel and you see them excelling, uh, the Bible tells you to rejoice with them that rejoice. Uh, and you, you find yourself not wanting to rejoice. You find yourself wanting to talk about her. Uh, to, uh, talk about her. You know, that's jealousy. Uh, and we ought not uh, uh, ignore those kind of uh, emotions and feelings because jealousy will cause you to react and to treat the individual bad. And if you're not careful, uh, jealousy will, uh, uh, will like anger. Anger, if you don't control it, it'll turn into wrath. Unbridled anger. Amen? So you, you've got to watch and guard uh, your emotions and feelings. And when those things hit you, don't ignore them. Uh, don't, don't like, uh, like you see a lump on your hand, so oh, that will go away. That's nothing. Uh, no, it's not nothing. It's something that needs to be examined. It's something that needs to be checked out. Amen? So, so talk about envies and then evil speakings. Uh, uh, the saints of God should not go around speaking evil of the saints of God. Amen. Amen. We should not go around speaking evil of one another. And, and the, uh, the people in the church, they do that. Amen. People talk evil about me. Amen. People talk evil about you. <laughs> uh, all the time. Hey, Lord, and we ought not speak evil one to another. That's, that's fueling fire for the devil. Amen. And, and, and speaking evil, uh, sometimes we try to get around, well, I'm just telling the truth. So what if you're telling the truth? If it, if it, if it has no uh, uh, godly intent, no godly motive, uh, backbiting, uh, 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 to tear somebody down, it should not be said. Amen. God says every idle word that you speak is going to be judged. <laughs> Uh, if we really understood that, we'll have a few converse, few converse, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say less in our conversations. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So, so evil speaking, uh, 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 he's saying, put away that. Uh, 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 take it off like, a, like an unclean garment. And what I love about how Peter is saying it, is he's saying it, it's not hard to do. Amen. Just be committed and do it. Amen? Make the change. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't, don't hold on to malice. Amen? People, people do you wrong every day. People do me wrong every day. But you can't hold on to evil thoughts and evil desires to want to get them back. Amen? That's not the way of God. Amen? You can't go around uh, downgrading and, and backbiting and talking about the saints. Amen? That's wrong. You can't go around talking about leadership. Amen? That's wrong. God does not want that. Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of James that, 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 that Michael was so careful about uh, uh, downgrading the devil, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't, all he said was say that the Lord rebuke you. Amen? Hallelujah. He was so careful about his words. Ought not we to be careful about God's anointed are not we to be careful about whom God places, hallelujah, in, in position? Thank you, Lord. We ought to be careful what we say. We ought to be careful what we do. Yes. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. Y'all ain't gonna like me tonight. <laughs> but y'all should love me. Uh, because I'm gonna tell you the truth. Hallelujah. So, so Paul, Peter's saying, uh, because God has brought us, and where God has brought us from, into holiness and righteousness, there ought to be a change. And our, our, our nature and our old ways, we have to lay them aside. Amen? We got to lay them aside. 
All right? Now, verse number two. Now, this is a reason why we've got to lay it aside. Notice what he says. As, as newborn babes, what? Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may what? Grow thereby. Now, notice. Uh, uh, what God has done for us. Amen? Uh, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, a phrase that the Jews use and it's called baraka. And that, that, that word baraka means uh, blessed be God who has done. Amen? God, God has done some great things for us. Amen? Uh, yeah. and, and we all uh, should benefit from the great things that he has done. Amen? We should praise God for the great things that he has done. And, and, and one of the things that, that he has done that Peter is, is hitting on here is, is, is as newborn babes, uh, when you come to Christ, there is a newness. Amen? There's a newness. And, and I want to I I really look into this so you'll really understand what I'm saying. When you, when you come to Christ, God does some things new for you. Amen? Now, the, the first thing that he does, he does the new, he gives you a rebirth. Amen? Uh, uh, we were all born in sin, shaped in iniquity, but he's given us a rebirth. Amen? Now let's go over here to the, to the book of St. John. Y'all bear with me, old pastor, tonight. The book of St. John, John chapter number three. We're going to go through quite a bit of scripture tonight. Amen? Thank you. St. John chapter number three and verse number three. St. John chapter three and verse number three. Amen? Amen? All right. Now notice, this is, this is your Savior speaking. And you know, he had this encounter with Nicodemus. Amen? So he said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, and there he's talking about the new birth. When, when you uh, repent of all your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, get baptized in the name of Jesus, you have been born again. It's a rebirth. Amen? You've been born again. It's a rebirth. A rebirth. Say rebirth. Rebirth. <laughs> I've been, I, I, so therefore, I have a new nature. Amen? I have new desires. That's why I can lay aside all of that old stuff because, because now I'm new. Amen? I have a new birth. I have a new start. I have a fresh beginning. Amen? All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. new. Amen? Now notice then, drop down then to verse number five. Verse number five says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born, of the water, amen, and of the what? Spirit. Spirit. That's, that's, that's water baptism and, and that uh, uh, being fit filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. amen. That causes a new mess, amen, within an individual. That water baptism, it puts to death the old man, the old deeds, the old life, amen, buried, amen. The spirit brings to life, amen, the new man, the new spirit, the new life, amen. Uh, I hope y'all caught me when I said that, amen. You have a new life, amen. You were dead, but now you are part of something that is a new and living way, amen. You ought to be excited about that, amen. I'm, I'm a part of something that's new and living, so therefore, yes, I have no problem getting rid of malice, envy, jealousy, and then fornication. Why? Because that is not a part of my new life. Amen. Those are the things that brought me down. Amen. Those are the things that kept me down. 
Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Those are the things that, that, that God is angry with. Amen. But but I'm out to please God because now I got a new life. Amen. A new life. I believe that was uh, uh, John D. Key. He had a song out. A new life. <laughs> Amen. We have a new life. Amen. Born again. Amen. Now, 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 not only do we have a, a new birth, but we also have a new nature. Amen. A new nature. If you're in Christ Jesus, you have a new nature. And let's go over to the book of Ezekiel. Amen. So you can, uh, uh, the, the purpose of Bible study, I don't say this often enough, but the purpose of Bible study is to uh, uh, whet your appetite so you can dig deeper into the scriptures. Amen. To study, to show yourself approved unto God. Amen. So that's what I'm trying to do. There's many more scriptures I can show you. But I'm just trying to whet your appetite. Amen. I thank God that and hope God, hope to God that you have a hunger and a thirst. Amen. After righteousness. If you do, then he said, ye shall be what? Huh? If you have a hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be what? You shall be what? Filled. Okay, I didn't hear y'all. Thank y'all. Gotta speak up. <laughs> Thank you. My wife said I got a hearing problem. Amen. I'm going to ride with that tonight. I'm going to ride with that tonight. Thank you, Lord. All right. Uh, Ezekiel uh, chapter 36 and verse 26. Amen. Now this, this is what happens when you are, when you receive the new birth. You also receive a new nature. Amen? That's why God can uh, command or demand these things from you. Because he knows what he puts in you. <laughs> uh, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now notice, he says, a new heart also will I give you. And that new heart is new desires. Amen. A new way of thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. A new heart will I, will I give you and a new what? A new spirit. Amen. A new spirit will I put within you. That's the Holy Ghost. He puts that within us. Amen. He gives us a new heart and to go along with that new heart, he gives us a new spirit. And, and, and part of the, the new spirit of the Holy Ghost, it's a new attitude. Amen? No longer am I a selfish person. Uh, no longer am I a, 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 a person that is a, a baby fire. Now, my attitude is to please God. My attitude now is to worship God. Amen? In spirit and in truth. Now notice. He said, a new heart also will I put in you, a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart uh, out of your flesh. That's carnal mindedness. Amen. God's taking that away. Amen. And I will give you a heart of what? Flesh. And that heart of flesh means you'll be tender uh, toward, toward me. You'll be tender toward my people. Amen? You'll be sensitive. In other words, Jesus put it this way. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. You'll be more sensitive now to those things that are spiritual. Amen? Not carnal minded, but spiritual minded. Amen? Hallelujah. It's, that's important, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. It's important for us to see things as God sees them. Amen? Not, not, not with a carnal mind, but with a spiritual mind. Amen? That's why the scripture says, there is therefore what now? No condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit. Now, now when you get that new birth and that new mind, you don't walk after the flesh anymore. Amen? Why? Because you're new. Amen? You walk after the Spirit. Amen? You're led by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, glory! 
You're led through the anointing. Amen. And you want more of the anointing. Huh? And you want, you want more of the spirit. Amen. You want more of God. God, I want more. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I want more. My appetite. Hallelujah. I want more. My desires. I want more. Uh, I want to be in your presence. Uh, I want to be among the saints. Hallelujah. I want to I want, I want be doing righteous and holiness. Uh, without the which no man shall see the Lord. I want more. Uh, God puts that in you. That doesn't come from you. That comes from God. Hallelujah. Uh, that's why when you pray and ask God for those things, that's his will. That's his desire. And you should expect those things to happen, God, because God has mandated that it should happen. Uh, God has ordained that it should happen. Uh, and glory. Hallelujah. That's why, my God, that, that, that following out the holiness and righteousness should, should not be a struggle. Uh, if you've got the new birth, if you've got the new heart, if you've got the new mind. Hallelujah. Lay aside all of that stuff. That's why Paul, Peter said it. Lay aside that stuff. That stuff doesn't build you up. Huh? You go after, you set your affections on things that are above where Christ sitting at the right hand of God. All that glory. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Your speech betrays whether or not you got that rebirth. Amen. Now notice what God does. He said, a new heart also will I give you. Amen. That's not uh, uh, something that you demand from God. Huh? It's like the Holy Ghost. He gives it to you. Because huh? you need it. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, a new spirit will I do what? I'll put it where? I'll put it in you. You've got power. Huh? You've got the anointing. You've got a treasure in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now notice. And he says, then I will take away. Huh? He's, he wants to take away that stony heart. He'll take it away. Amen. Take it away. Why? Because it serves no purpose. It's dead. Amen. Uh, it's stiff. -neck. It's rebellious. Amen. Now notice. Uh, and I'll put in you uh, a heart. I take away the stony heart, and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Now, notice verse 27. And I will put my, what? Spirit within you, and cause you to do what? Walk in my, what? Statutes, and ye shall, what? Keep my judgments, and do them. That, putting my spirit within you, is literally the spirit of Christ, who became obedient well, the scripture says he humbled himself uh, and became obedient unto death. That's what spirit he's talking about. Amen. That, that, that you would have the spirit of Christ, that you would become obedient, that you would humble yourself uh, with God's commands, that you would humble yourself to fulfill God's will. Amen. And become obedient. Amen. Now, when I'm talking about humbling yourself, is that 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 if God says for you to do something, you submit yourself to that word of God and do it. If God says don't do something, you humble yourself huh, and submit your mind so that you don't do it. You, in other words, humiliation or humbleness goes both ways. Amen. Y'all with me tonight? Oh, it goes both ways. If, if, if God says do it, Frank, then I humble myself and I do it. If God says don't do it, Frank, I humble myself and I don't do it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. I submit to whatever God's word is, yeah. to whatever God's desire is. And, and I got a spirit to do it. I do it. I, you know, you got to do things in a right way. Hallelujah, under, under God's right-mindedness, if you allow me to say it. Hallelujah, you can't serve God and do things here, here, take this off. Here, do it this way. Bye -bye. You know, with, a, with, a, with an angry tone, with a nasty mind, amen, with evil motives. You got to have the right spirit. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. 
And God says, I'll give you that right spirit. Uh, I'll put it within you. Uh, uh, David, let's go over here to, uh, to Psalms. My God, Psalms, uh, Lord, help me here, Holy Ghost. Psalms 51. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all got it? Psalms 51. Let me know when you have it. All right, and jump down uh, to verse number 10. He said, created me. Okay, hold on, see you climb. Uh, he says, created me a clean heart. Then he said, uh, that's, that's what we want God to do for us. And he says, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew what? The reason why David fell is because he had a bad spirit. His mind wasn't right. His attitude wasn't right. That's what that spirit there is. It's his attitude. Amen? Your attitude has to be right. And that's controlled by your spirit. Amen? Your human spirit. <laughs> so notice what he said. He said, created me a clean heart, and Lord, renew a right spirit within me. When, when you find yourself grumpy, when you find yourself don't want to do things that are right, rebellious, stiff-necked, say, Lord, renew in me a right spirit. Yes. Huh? And, and, and I'm saying that not in a negative way because it happens to all of us. Yeah. We get sick and tired uh, of, of, of doing things, don't we? Yeah. Uh, we get sick and tired of other people. Yeah. <laughs> you follow me? We get sick and tired of ourselves. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. But, but, but you've always got to be mindful that, that you're in the presence of God. Yeah. And you've got to have a right spirit. You can't, you can't uh, do things that are uh, 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 holy and righteous with an a, 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 a evil negative spirit, amen, because then that will cause you to backbite, then that will cause you to lie, then that will cause you to, to back up, you know, what the devil wants you to do, y'all need to write this particular word down, it's called apostasy, amen, and, and apostasy really deals with, let me tell you how to spell that word, thank you Holy Ghost, the Lord said give it to him, Frank, give it to him, apostasy, A P O S. T-A-S-Y, apostasy, amen? And that word literally means to abandon religious beliefs, amen? To, to, to abandon them and to stand against them. And uh, the reason why I bring that up is, is it's, it really comes from uh, a statement of denouncing God. Yes. Amen. And some people think that, well, if I stand up and, and make a public declaration that I don't believe God, that's what apostasy is, and that's what's denounced. That that means denouncing God. Hmm. But you can denounce God on a subtle basis by not following after His word. That's apostasy. Mm. Amen. God says one thing, you do another thing. That's being apostate, denouncing what God has commanded, what God has said. How subtle it may be, uh, it it's deals with an apostate mind, denouncing the, the righteous order of God. You don't want to denounce the righteous order of God by any means. Amen? Uh, you always want to let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Amen? You always want uh, God and his word to be glorified and magnified in your life. You don't ever want to denounce on, even on a subtle basis what God has said. Amen? Amen. 
Let man be godly true and every man a what? A liar. All right. Now, let's move on. Y'all with me? Amen. All right. Now, let's go back then. We're talking about newness. So, so, God also then, he's given you a rebirth. You've been born again. Yes. He's also given you a new nature. Yes. Amen. By giving you a new heart and a new spirit. The Holy Ghost brings in the fruit of the Spirit, which brings in God's nature into you. Deacon Field, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, huh? faith, meekness. Yeah. The reason why I asked him that because we talked about it and I know he knew it. <laughs> so you got to be a good lawyer. Never ask a question you don't know the answer to. <laughs> Amen? And those are the attributes of God. That's his nature. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, he brings you the, the, the nature of God. Amen? And that nature dwells within you. Amen? Which is the fruit of the Spirit. Deacon Fields, where's that found? Where's that found? Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and you want to study that. Make sure those things are operating within you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's then go over uh, to 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter number 10. And verse number six. When you have it, say amen. First Samuel, chapter number 10, verse number six. And now, I want to show you that here in the scriptures, it's talking about God bringing you a new beginning. <laughs> uh, a new beginning. Thank you, Jesus. He says, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou, uh, and thou shalt be turned into what? Another man. Another man, a new person. A new beginning. When God's spirit, when his anointing comes upon you, huh? yes. you're new. And you may say, well, Pastor, why are you bringing all this newness up? I want you to say, be new. Get rid of that old stuff. Get rid of that old way of acting. Get rid of that old way of thinking. Huh? Think new. Huh? You are a new man. Well, let me, let me bring it to the New Testament. Go, go with me over here to uh, 2 Corinthians. Amen. Uh, that's what... This is where Peter and them get this stuff from. Huh? They get it from the Old Testament and bring it to the New. <laughs> uh, Second Peter, I mean Second Corinthians, chapter number five. Then we got to move on. Chapter number five and verse seventeen. Very familiar passage of scripture. New life. What's the second? Therefore, if you're in Christ Jesus, a new creature, and if you study that word creature there, it really means a new being. When you come into the body of Christ, you literally become a new being. Amen? New. So, so if you're new, then those old has passed away. You can't bring your old self <laughs> or your old way of doing things into a new way. Jesus said it this way. No man taking a, 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 a new bottle, I mean a, a new wine and put it into what? Old bottles. 
At least they what? They pray. They pray. So, 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 so God, he gives you a newness. Amen? New beginning. New birth. New nature. You're placed in a new kingdom. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that right blood is the blood of Jesus. Newness. Newness. All right. Now let's let's go over then, back over to the book of of First Peter. First Peter chapter number two. All right. And we have verse number two. He says, as newborn babes. Now, newborn. We're supposed to be new. Amen. We did all of that to show you that you're new. And how you're new. Amen. He says, as newborn babes, you've got to what? Desire. That's it. Amen. Desire is everything. You got to want it. it. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hunger is a, is a desire. Mm -hmm. Thirst is a desire. Yeah. Amen. And, and God puts that hunger and thirst within you. He puts the desire within you. It's a part of the newness of life. Amen. He said, as newborn babes, desire what? The sincere milk of what? In other words, that sincere uh, milk means, that sincereness means pureness. Amen? Desire the pure Word. Now you might say, well, well, why is Peter saying I got a desire to pure word? Because a lot of people mix things with the word of God. Amen. People quote the word out of context. Uh, what we call chimney corner scripture. Make stuff up. And you can't, you can't stand on that which is made up because the Bible says God knoweth them that are his. God knows his word. And you've got to desire the sincere milk of the word. And, and the reason why you've got to desire it is so that you may be able to grow. If you're in a, a new birth and you're in a new and living way, you want to grow right. Yes. A lot of a lot of children make a lot of mistakes because their parents didn't raise them right. I got an amen. They didn't put in them. They didn't put in them. A, oh, I like that too. They didn't put in them or take out of them, but they didn't put in them a good foundation. Children aren't born prejudiced. They learn that. And then what they are born with, you work with them to get it out of them. And I ain't talking about beating. I'm talking about working with them. 
Tell them a little Johnny, make good choices. <laughs> Lying is not good, because you know they're going to lie. They're going to steal. Oh, Johnny, don't steal. Stealing isn't good. And then you know, while they're young, they're tender. Right? They say within uh, the first five to seven years, their personality has formed. And, and during that first five to seven years, they're primarily with the parents. Amen. And notice the responsibility of the parents to help form and shape the thought pattern of the child. Y'all with me? Amen. Notice the Sheba prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. Notice then, the next verse says, in, in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, it says, then teach these things to your children. I venture to say, the most important thing that your children should learn from you is not A, B, C's, 1, 2, 3's, but the commandments of God. How to love one another. Amen? Amen. And that's what Peter said. Now that you're new, don't try to go after everything that is evil and unrighteous. But go after the things that build you up. Go after the things that sanctify you. Go after the things that are holy and righteous. Go after the commandments of God. Y'all with me? Amen. Notice what he said. As newborn babes, what? Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may do what? Now, now God's word, if you ingest it, Receive it will cause you to grow. Amen. 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 It'll cause you to grow. Paul told Timothy that that he was praising his his mother. Uh, uh, I think her name was Eunice or Lois for for putting that word in him, which caused him to grow. Amen. Put the word in you that'll cause you to grow. Spend time. Now I'm going to say this. We ought to spend more time with our, our new saints. Giving them the word of God. The ABCs of the word. So that they can grow. Now, now what I mean by that is is that when you have contact with new saints, you shouldn't give them meat. Because I'll be able to, I, I can choke them. Amen. Amen. Give, them, give them something that they can handle. Give them some uh, 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 foundational stuff. Yeah. Rudimentary stuff. Also, Set a good example. Don't talk about the pastor. Don't talk about the first lady. Yeah. Don't talk about the deacons. Yeah. Don't talk about uh, the ushers. Yeah. Don't talk about the other saints. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They, 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 uh, uh, everybody don't have everything. Yeah. Amen. People are different. People are, don't have the right status. Amen. The same status. We ought to build one another up. Amen. 
Amen. We ought to be encouraging one another, strengthening one another, especially a, a newborn saint. Yes, Lord. Because they can go either way. They're in a dangerous position. They don't know how to eat the fish and spit out the bone. of God instead of drawing nigh to God and, and, and staying tender, staying humble. Yeah, those things, there's, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, testing trials, wear them down. You know, but they're not, not walking in the spirit. Got to continue to walk in the spirit. Uh, and that renews the mind. Keeps you humble. There's a lot to this. And, and the Bible says, let a man examine himself to see whether or not they're in the faith. What faith? The faith that was once delivered to the saints. Notice this. Notice, notice. He says, as newborn babes do what? Desire. Uh-huh. Yeah, that you may do what? Grow thereby. So, so, so the object of, of receiving the word is for our growth. Amen. 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 You know a tree by what? The fruit it bears. Amen. Jesus. He said that there were types of soil. That word fell upon what? The stony ground? Some fell by the wayside? Among the thorns? And upon good ground? Right? And out of the four, there was only one good. And when it fell upon the good, they brought forth fruit with what? Patience. Amen. You've got to allow God's word to germinate in your mind to bring forth fruit with patience. Yes. Yes. If you deal with maturity, how you can tell whether or not you're growing in God is how quickly you obey His Word. If God gives you a command and you struggle and wrestle with it, then you are still immature. You may say, well, Pastor, I got to pray about it. Why you got to pray? God gave it to you. What are you praying? Huh? When God gives you a command, puts his word before you, you accept it and obey it. That's the level of maturity. Level of commitment, level of trust in God. Let's go on. He says, as newborn babes desire the what? Sincere milk of the word 
that ye may what? That you may grow thereby. Read. All right. If so be, then, that you have what? Tasted or experienced that the Lord is what? Isn't the Lord gracious? Isn't the Lord wonderful? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, B, uh, to whom coming as unto a what? A living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but what? Chosen of God and what? Precious. Now, that's a reference to Jesus. Uh, uh, Peter and the other apostles, they didn't have the, the New Testament because they were living it. Uh, they didn't write it. So they depended on the Old Testament, right? And so Peter here is quoting from the book of Isaiah. Amen? Now notice. And he says, to whom coming as unto a what? A, a, a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but what? Chosen of God and precious. Now, he's talking about Jesus as being the chief cornerstone, him being the foundation upon which we live. And, 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 and he's calling Jesus a living stone. Amen? Why? Because he has the Holy Ghost. Because he has power. Amen? Because he's anointed. Amen? And, 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 and notice what he said. Uh, disallowed indeed of men, men rejected him. Amen? They hated him. Am I right? They didn't receive him. Thank you, Lord. Notice. But he still is chosen of God. He's elected. Amen? Of God. You yourself have been chosen of God. Yes, you yourself have been elected by God. Yes, Amen. You yourself are a part of the lively stones. Why? Because you have the Spirit. You have the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we built upon that foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Amen. Jesus Christ himself being what? The chief cornerstone. Amen? Now, Jesus said, He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them uh, is likened unto a wise man that have built his house upon a what? A rock. That's a reference to Jesus being that cornerstone. If you hear my teaching, Christ is saying, Amen? And you obey my teaching, you will become a part of my spiritual house. Huh? And, and you will become a part of my cornerstone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now that's, that's powerful. Amen? Because he goes on further. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but we'll read it. It goes on further that if you do and obey and trust in him, you shall never be confounded. Amen? All of that means that you shall never fail. You should never fall. Amen? The devil can't confuse you. Yeah. Uh, all of the devil can't do nothing with you. Why? Because you are, are built up. Uh, you, you've laid the foundation. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and I like what Paul told Timothy. He said, your mother put them scriptures in you and so that they can make you wise. Uh, wise unto salvation. Jesus teaches us so that we can be wise, wise unto salvation. In other words, when, when, when we get that word in us, we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. We should not uh, make dumb choices anymore. Amen? Why? Wow. Because if we're following after the word of God, it makes us wise. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now notice then. Notice. He says, to whom coming as unto a living stone. Jesus is a living stone. Amen. Hallelujah. He's alive. Notice. 
He's taking a natural analogy, making it spiritual. Mm -hmm. Disallowed indeed of men, but what? Chosen of God and what? Precious. And that word precious there means it's, it's valuable. Not only rare, but valuable. Amen. Isn't Jesus valuable to Amen. your salvation? Uh, do you need Jesus? Amen. Do you need his teaching? Yes. Do you need his doctrine? Amen. Then go after him with all your heart. Yes. With all your desire. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. In other words, if you know you need it, reverence it so uh, because you know that there's no other. No other. Uh, don't mix it with anything. Don't mix it with other religions. Don't mix it with other doctrines or teachings. Amen? Amen. Amen. We just confess that we need it. Yeah. There's no other way. Yeah. Amen? It's precious. It's valuable. Amen? Yeah. Do, we, do we respond in a such a way that of what we're confessing? Do I go after it as I'm confessing it? Right now, do I treat the word and treat what Jesus has said as precious, as valuable, as necessary, as no other way, as the truth and the life, that no man can come to the Father but by his teaching, his word? Amen? Y'all with me? All right, now notice this. He says, Verse 20, uh, verse 5. He says, ye also then, notice, he says, you also as lively stones. What makes us alive? The new birth. <laughs> Having the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Amen? You also as lively stones are built up. Amen? A spiritual house. And I told you how you build yourself on the spiritual house by obeying the teachings of Jesus. He gave it to you. Amen? And, and the, let's go there so we can get it. Hallelujah. The book of, of Matthew, chapter number 7. When you have a say, man, The book of Matthew, chapter number 7, and verse 24. We in the book of Matthew, chapter number 7, and verse 24. We are a part of His spiritual house as, as lively stone. We're not dead. Think of that. Uh, 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 his body, I'm not talking about the church now. His body is not dead. What do y'all do with dead things? Bury. Don't we do that with dead things? We bury it. Am I right? Dead people are not connected to the body of Christ. Only lively stuff. Am I right? Let's, 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 let's go here real quick. Hold that because we're coming back. We're coming back. St. John, we're coming back to Matthew, but I want you to go to St. John with me, chapter 15. We have a say, man. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me 
that bringeth not forth fruit, he what? If your life isn't productive, you're in Christ, but there's no productivity. What should you expect? To be what? Huh? See that? I think we're denying the word. He says, every branch in me not that beareth not fruit, he what? So what can you expect if you're not bringing forth fruit? To be what? Taken away. <laughs> we don't like to say that. <laughs> there you go. See, see now, that's what I mean by uh, when I brought up that word apostasy and, and, and re rejecting rejecting or denouncing the truth. When, when, we don't, when we don't accept this, it's, it's having an apostate mind. It's, it's even these, uh, the little, Jesus said, the little foxes destroy the body. When I reject that, that little statement, it can destroy me. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta believe the whole truth. Amen? Because, because that, that statement that right there, it can work for you. Put some fear in you. Drive you to God. When, when, when I first got saved, uh, I never forget, I went to a Bible study and, and the bishop was teaching that night and he said, you, you baby saints, you new saints, are in a dangerous place, you can go one way or the other. And so I advise you to get all the way in Christ. Let go of, let go of all that worldly stuff because it can take you out. Those words stuck in me. Especially when he said, you're in a dangerous place, you can go one way or the other. I was so happy to be in the body. I was so happy to, to be in Christ well, I didn't want nothing to take away my joy. I didn't want nothing to take away my peace. Amen. 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 So, 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 so that motivated me. That, that scripture right there should motivate you. Check your fruit. <laughs> Notice what he said. He says, every branch in me that bear not fruit he take it away. Pastor don't take it away. Deacons don't take it away. He takes it away. No, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. Sends it through some fire. Amen? Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't want that to happen. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice that it may bring forth what? More fruit. You should not be diminishing in Christ. Oh, my God. I'm getting revelation here now. 20, 30 years in Christ, you should be growing. Excelling. Not diminishing. Amen. Notice the scripture. It says, uh, they that wait Upon the Lord, they shall what? Renew their strength. They shall do what? Mount up as wings of an eagle. That's your first stages. They shall walk and not be weary. That's when you're heading middle age. Oh, I forget one. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There you go. Thank you. I got to get it right. <laughs> That's why you got to go to the scripture. Amen? Now, notice, he said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. That's your first stages in life. And when you first get stayed, you fly like an eagle. Fly, eagle, fly. Amen? They shall walk and not be weary. Uh, that's your middle age. You slow down, amen, but you don't get weary. You still grow. Amen? Still mature. Still producing. Amen? Huh? Thank you, Lord. And, and, and that's what God wants from us. Amen. 
Am I right? Notice this. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he does what? He purchases it that it may be what? Amen. That it be, may bring more fruit. Amen. And, and that's what I wanted to show you before we go over to, to what Christ taught us in the book of Matthew, chapter number 7. Let's go over there. Matthew number 7. Matthew chapter number 7. And verse 24. This is how you bear fruit. You are a lively stone. Am I right? Amen. Built up. On a spiritual house. Yes. Amen? Amen? Upon a solid foundation. Am I right? Now notice what he said. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and what? Isn't that key? That's, how, that's the proof of you hearing it. Hearing means listening with the intent to obey. It literally means leaning in, paying attention, so that I can perform what is said. And if I perform what is said, I'm going to bring forth more fruit. Notice what he said. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a what? Wise man which built his house where? On a rock. And, that, and, that, and that's Jesus, him being that cornerstone. Amen? And if we are a part of the cornerstone, or, or lively stones, we've got to hear what he says and do it. Am I right? If I don't hear what he says and don't do it, then I'm not a lively stone. I'm not a part of the cornerstone. Because we just read, he said, I'm the true vine, a father's the husband man, every branch, Huh? That bringeth not, bringeth not for fruit, he does what? He take it away. If your life isn't productive in Christ, if you're not producing the things that are, are righteous, the things that are connected to holiness, you're taken out. We don't like that kind of talk. Jesus said that. He that heareth these things of mine. Now, we, we established earlier that Christ is important. Very important. We've already established that what he says and what he's taught, you've got to live by. Haven't we established that? Uh, and, and therefore, our actions have to display that. Now, you know, this wasn't my Bible study tonight. I was going a whole different way. Amen. But I got to let God lead. Amen. Amen. We got we to gotta, we gotta hear with the intent to obey yes. and walk worthy of this vocation where we've been called. Amen. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now, notice what Jesus said. He said, he said, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell what? Not, for it was what? People that have a relationship with Christ. Yes, sir. Huh? People that, that pray. <laughs> People that read the word. People that obey the word of God. Huh? When life happens, they don't abandon him. They don't turn away from him. They don't go somewhere and say, I got to get myself right. 
Because they, they trust in the Lord. They know that, 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 that the only way to get right is to go to Jesus. I've watched it. People that have tragedy in their life and, and uh, uh, if they have a relationship with Christ, they come through it. They come through it. But people that don't have a relationship with Christ, they about to lose their mind. Amen. Life happens to everybody. But, but what makes the difference is, is your relationship. Are you building a relationship with him? And you can't start building a house in the rain. You can't start building a house in the storm. Huh? You got to build your house before the storm comes. You got to build your house before the rain comes. You got to build your relationship with Christ before life happens. Yes. The storms come. The winds blow. Huh? So that you'll be able to survive. So that you'll be able to endure. So that you'll be able to come through pure as gold. You know, testing trials, uh, the reason why the writer says count it all joy and the reason why Jesus says rejoice uh, when, when people revile you and say all manner of evil against you. You know, uh, the main reason uh, 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 for that is, is telling you to rejoice because you understand the end result. You understand that it's for your making. You understand that it's, it's, it's building you up. You understand that, that, that it's causing you to grow. Amen. That, it's, that it's revealing some, some weakness in you that, that needs to be strengthened. So that's why he says, count it all joy. That's why he says, uh, uh, rejoice. Not, not, not that what you're going through is a rejoiceful thing, but you realize that God is really about to do something for my life. God is really about to, about, about to elevate me. Huh? Because I'm going through this for a reason. Huh? And, and God is working something in me. And he's taking something out of me. So I can be strong in him. Huh? So I can see his glory. So I can understand his power. So I can get a greater revelation of what I have. Other than it, that what we have is precious. That what we have is great. Hallelujah. And that's, that's why he says count it all joy. Hallelujah. This devil is opposite. He's trying to take you out. <laughs> Not build you up. He's trying to, he's trying to downgrade you. Uh, but, but God allowed it to happen to upgrade you. That's why you got to count it all joy. True story. I think it was last week. Last week I got up, had a bad spirit on me. And, and, and my mind, I'm fussing. And in and, and my mind, I'm complaining about everything. Holy Ghost spoke to me. I knew it was Holy Ghost. Because all it said was, start rejoicing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and you know, I let that word set in and I started rejoicing. I started thanking God. I started praising God. And, and, and about 15 minutes in, all that negative thought was gone. My whole attitude changed. Huh? And I said, look at God. I said, look at God. I said, look at God. I could have messed up my whole day. Rejoice. Give thanks. Give God praise. Now, where did that fruit come from? It was already in me. It was already in me. Follow me? He didn't tell me uh, uh, to rejoice and to give him thanks and to give him praise because it wasn't in me. Holy Ghost knows what's in me. 
Sometimes we got to eat off the fruit that's in us. Follow? So build that relationship now. Amen? Amen. Before the unbearable happens. <laughs> and then you know where to take that unbearable pain. Cast all your cares upon. For he carried. Doesn't he care for you? Isn't he sweet? Huh? Isn't he powerful? Isn't he mighty? There you go. Ticket Fields? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Go ahead. I was just going to say that, uh, like you said, growing up, a lot of things that we learn before we reach a certain age is in us. Uh, parents tell you, go out there and fight. He hits you, hit him back. You know, uh, we have a lot of things. Kids are watching all kinds of violence and stuff, religion is all kind of violent stuff. And when you become that new creature, you have to bring every one of those thoughts to the obedience of the word. Come of on here. gives you liberty and it's perfect <laughs> it's been tried in the fire <laughs> thank you Lord when you look in the perfect law of liberty you'll see a, your reflection of you because the word is quick and powerful huh? it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart that's when it reflects it shows your thoughts and intents of your heart it reveals your motives huh? your actions you follow? Yeah. And your motives and actions have to line up with righteousness. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and if that word reveals that you don't have the right motive, you got to do what? Repent. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Just repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. Huh? Do like David. Wash me. Yeah. Have a Psalms 51 experience. Cleanse me. Cleanse. Lord, created me a clean heart. Why fuck up and fight against God? Lord created me a clean heart uh, and renew a right spirit within me. Uh, isn't that simple? Yeah, that's it's simple. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just humble yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And 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 when you see things in you that is not like God, don't throw in the towel. Rejoice! I thank God. Lord, I thank you. Uh, because now I got a chance to get it right. Mother Louise? I was going to say, so in other words, God deal with us according to the power that lies within us. Yes. Because if we don't have uh, that relationship with him, that uh, spirit of obedience is trying to obey, then his word can, can never be connected within us so he can wow. use us. Wow. You know, according to his will. Wow. So we have to have that relationship. Yes. You mentioned about uh, creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit yes. within me. You know, God is a spirit. Yes. And in order for, I pray that down because you never know what God has you to do, what he, what, who he might have you come in contact with. And our flesh never want to obey God. No. So when you're walking in the spirit, it's the anointing of God. Yes. When you're walking in the spirit, then it's easier. Flesh might not want to do it. But yes. the spirit within you is easy to do because the spirit is willing. Willing. You have a, a willing mind to do it and God will help you because of what's in you. Yes, absolutely. We want, as she said, to stay connected to God. And want God to use us. And when we're not operating in his word, there's a disconnect. Amen. Because you got to remember, God's word is his thoughts. Uh, and his thoughts in you produces an action. Amen. That's why he said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. 
Not thoughts of evil, but good thoughts to bring you to an expected end. Amen? And when our imagination or our thoughts in our mind rise up, we got to cast those thoughts down. Amen? It's imperative. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and I've, got to, I've got to have a desire. I should never lose my desire for the sincere milk of the word. Never lose that desire. Hallelujah. If I, if I lose that desire, something's wrong. You see, when people are about to get out of this world, one of the last things they do is stop eating and drinking. Huh? Then they stop speaking. Could be stop speaking first and then stop eating and drinking. Then you know things get ready to shut down. Amen. Vital organs are getting ready to shut down. Right? They say you can't go three days without water. Uh, you can go longer without food, but you can't go that without uh, water. Amen? <laughs> you know when in, in, in your own life, I'm telling you, if, if you don't read God's word, have a desire for the word of God, your vital organ, which is your heart, your, your, not, not your blood pump, your heart, your mind, it's about to shut down on you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's about to show you some things that it wanted to do a long time ago. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah. That's why, that's why, you know, Paul said, for this cause I keep my body up. A lot of wicked stuff come to my mind, if I'm honest. Huh? I, I got to reject it with the word of God. Amen. A lot of wicked stuff come to your mind. Huh? If you're honest, huh? you're not exempt. Uh, but you reject that stuff because of the word of God. Yes, Lord. Amen? Yes. Wash me, and I shall be clean. Jesus said you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for this Bible class, even though it kind of switched on me. Thank you, Lord. But that's all right. Hallelujah. I thank God for the word. Thank God. Thank God for it. Pastor, we thank you, Lord. We thank God for her. We thank God for Sister Della. You preaching, Sister Della? Oh, okay. I'm just asking. I didn't know. Thank you. I got to know. <laughs> we thank God. We want to just give you space to have some words of expression. Amen. I'm going to have you up here preaching one day. If you accept the invitation. I'm being presumptuous now. You forgive me, Pastor. Thank you, Lord. I, I, feel, I feel the... I feel the boldness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. God bless.